What's up guys? I'm Zach Evans and today I'm going to teach you guys how to do really fast arpeggio, crossover arpeggio runs on the piano. Looks something like this. So that, I call it sweeping because it's similar to what a guitar player does when he sweep picks. And all it is is really fast arpeggios. Um, I'm going to teach you the basic sweep today. And eventually, maybe I'll make another tutorial on the more complicated and the more complex versions like the one I just showed you. The basic sweep just looks like this. So first, I'm just going to teach you the basic sweep. Once you get that down, I'll make a tutorial later on teaching you the more advanced version of it. So I'm going to basically just split this into three parts. The first part, I'm going to show you just the notes. Second part, I'm going to show you the form and the exact technique of how to do it. And the third part, I'm just going to show you guys a couple of practice strategies that will save you like a ton of time in learning this and make it way more solid when you do learn it. So first part is just the notes. All it is, it looks harder than it actually is. All it is is the root, the third, and the fifth of the chord going all the way up and then going all the way back down. So if we're doing a C chord, C major chord, it's going to be... C, E, G, C, E, G, C, E, G, C, E, G, C, G, E, C, G, E, C, G, E, C, G, E, C. So all it is is C, E, G is going up and then G, E, C is going down. Now the fingering you're going to want to use for your left hand, you can either do 5, 3, 1, 4, 2, 1, doesn't really matter, whatever is more comfortable for you. The right hand, you have to do one, two, three. And the reason you have to do that is because when you do the turnaround at the top, you need your pinky for this C up here when you do C, E, G, and then you need that pinky C, G, E, C when you come back down. So whenever you practice, you always obviously have to use the right fingerings. Otherwise, once you get up to high speeds, it's not gonna work right. Um, so those are the basic notes. Now for the technique. And please keep watching because I know a lot of you guys are going to say, oh, I know the notes. This is going to be easy. I'll just go practice it now. But if you learn how to do it, even if you're playing the notes right, but you have the technique wrong, once you try to speed it up, it's not going to work. So using this technique, it's going to enable you to do it fast. It's going to enable it to be solid and smooth. So here's the technique. Whenever, the basic rule is whenever your arm is moving out, or your right arm is moving out, it's always a downward swoop with your wrist. So your wrist goes down and out. So for example, for my right hand, whenever, when I'm going up the scale, it's gonna look like this. So your wrist almost makes a little half circle down and out. And whenever it's going inward, so if your right hand is moving this way or your left hand is moving this way, it's kind of a over-the-top motion with your wrist. So for the right hand, it would be kind of like that. Now I'm over-exaggerating, but it's going to be a circle up like that. So how it looks is the left hand is going to be in first, so it's going to be over, and then under, over, under, over, because it comes back down now, under, over, under. So in a faster speed, it looks something like this. And especially this top turnaround, it's super important. If you try to just play it fingers, you're not going to be able to build any speed. So you have to go under with your wrist and then over with your wrist. And the roll of your wrist provides you with more speed than your fingers can provide alone. Um, so that's the basic technique. Make sure whenever you do any of the drills, you use the correct technique because if you use, if you just play, and you don't use the wrist motion, it'll work fine at slow speeds. But once you really try to crank up the tempo, which really adds that flair to your songs and that, you know, makes people go, "Whoa, that was cool!" You know, you have to use the other, the correct technique. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get it up to those high speeds. Okay, so then the third part, I'm going to tell you guys the practice strategies to get these down. And I'm telling you, don't just do the thing where you repeat it a hundred times. I've tried that before and it might work eventually, but it's gonna take a long time to do and it is definitely not the most efficient technique. There's 
practice strategies that work a lot better. So the first technique you want to do when you're practicing this is called rhythms or groups. And I'm telling you guys, this is the best technique anytime you have a straight rhythm. And by straight rhythm, I mean if it's just all eighth notes, all sixteenth notes, there's no there's no variation. It's just da 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 da. Um, and what it is is you use three different rhythms when you play this. The first one is short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short, long. So it looks something like this. Short, short, long, 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 short. The second rhythm is short, long, short, short, long, short, short, long. So it's short, long, short, 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 short. And then the third rhythm is long, short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short. So long, short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short. And you get the idea. Um, and the reason these three rhythms work is because basically your brain can't handle that fast of notes yet, but you still want to be practicing speed with your fingers. So basically it allows you to break down this entire movement into groups of only three at a time. So your brain only has to think C E G, C E G, C E G, C E G, and allows your fingers to move at a fast pace and drill in that muscle memory while your brain is still kind of learning um, which exactly notes to hit and stuff like that. So that's the first technique. Second technique is play it as chords. So what I mean by that is play all three notes at the same time. So. And the reason we do this is because it's easier, when you're playing it fast, you're not gonna, your eyes aren't going to have enough time to look at a C, an E, a G, C, E, G. So all your eyes look for is that first note and then your fingers are already in place because your, your hand will memorize the shape of C, E, G and this, this shape. So all you have to do is look for that first C. So instead of having to learn you know, all these notes, all you have to learn is C, 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 and on the way down, G, 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 G. Um, so when you practice this, what you want to focus on once you start getting good at it is the horizontal movement. And what I mean by that is, even if you're playing the chord slow, try to get the horizontal movement fast. So it could be slow, but then fast. So, bah. Because really the hardest part of this is getting that big jump. Playing this, that's not hard. That's not hard. But getting the jump from here to here to here to here, that's the tricky part. So what you want to do is, even if you're playing the chord slow, practice that fast lateral movement. Okay, so that's the second practice strategy. The first one is rhythms. second one is chords. 